This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. Imagine crawling your way through a seemingly never-ending series of foreign underground tunnels, armed only with a flashlight, a knife, and a small pistol. For the Vietnam War tunnel rats, these missions formed part of their day-to-day -day lives. Hundreds of fearless American and Australian soldiers were chosen by the Army specifically for this task. They were selected not only due to their short stature and svelte physiques, but also due to their intrepidness and attention to detail. Gathering enemy intelligence and disarming bombs inside these underground structures came with plenty of risks. The booby traps the North Vietnamese Army used against them have gone down in history as some of the most ingenious yet terrifying methods of defense. The tunnel rats of the Vietnam War saw some of the most primal combat in what was supposed to be a modern conflict. But now learn even more about the cutting-edge technology deployed above ground in the Magellan TV documentary Vietnam War. Part of the Combat Machine series, this entry explores the battle of North Vietnamese ingenuity against the latest advances in U.S. military power. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership created by filmmakers that brings over 3,000 documentaries to all of your devices. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkducks or click the link in the description below to get a free one-month trial. Magellan TV continues to add new and compelling documentaries in their war and military playlists along with other feature genres such as true crime, space, and ancient history. Support Duck Ducks and check out Magellan TV with a one-month free trial. Click on the link in the description below or visit try.magellantv.com slash darkducks today. A big surprise. The North Vietnamese Army both frustrated and puzzled U.S. troops. When the U.S. attempted to pursue its enemy, the Viet Cong's men seemed to vanish into thin air as they melted away deep into the jungle. American soldiers would often come under enemy fire from positions that seemed to be hidden in a tree line, but when such a line was searched, there was no sign of anyone. The Americans simply could not understand how the North Vietnamese were able to disappear without a trace. In reality, the Viet Cong had been using a tunnel system to move around the jungle undetected. This system wasn't new. Since the earliest stages of the war against the French in the 1940s, the Vietnamese began a hands-on construction of an extensive underground tunnel system on the jungle terrain of South Vietnam. The tunnels were expanded and further improved by the Viet Cong for the war against the Americans. The construction was so massive and complex that by the 1960s, the tunnel complexes included hospitals, storage, and even army headquarters. The Ho Chi Minh Trail, as it's now known, covered a distance of almost 155 miles and linked Viet Cong bases from Saigon all the way to the Cambodian border. The system allowed the North Vietnamese to remain hidden subterraneously for months at a time. It gave them an enormous advantage over their adversaries. The tunnels themselves were not cut in straight lines. They were made with corners that had between a 60 and 120 degree angle to them. This meant that shooting in a straight line was virtually impossible. It also helped deflect bombs blasted by the enemy. The trail's entrances and exits were so well hidden that the Viet Cong troops could basically pop up out of nowhere for ambushes and surprise attacks. This also allowed them to set up their infamous booby traps. In January 1966, the 173rd Airborne Division conducted Operation Crimp around a notoriously defended area known as the Iron Triangle. During the operation, American troops found several booby traps, as well as bunkers. Baffled, they called in Australian engineers that were working with the 173rd Airborne Brigade. When the Australians began sapping the place, they ran into a heavy concealed door that led into a strange tunnel entrance. When they entered the tunnel, they did so only with a flashlight and a single bayonet. Once inside, the Americans and the Australians were in shock at the level of sophistication of the tunnel system. They had just stumbled into the Viet Cong's headquarters. The American and Australian troops wanted to discover more of the tunnels. They knew important intelligence documents had to be inside. And so, U.S. commanders began to send more and more soldiers into the tunnels. They would have to recover weapons caches and important documents, all while knowing they were in danger of running into the enemy. These brave subterranean soldiers were all volunteers, and became known to American troops as tunnel rats. Australian troops referred to them as ferrets. Vietnam Tunnel Rats Not just anybody could become a tunnel rat. Going down into this complex tunnel system was a hazardous business. According to chemical officer Herbert Thornton, these volunteers, quote, had to have an even temperament, an inquisitive mind, a lot of common sense, and be exceptionally brave. 
These tunnel rats were men of statures five feet five inches and shorter, so they would be able to maneuver their bodies inside the narrow tunnels. Most of them were almost exclusively of Hispanic descent, such as Puerto Rican or Mexican American. These men were equipped with a standard issue M1911 pistol or M1917 revolver and a single bayonet, as well as a flashlight and demolition explosives. The loud report from their guns often left the tunnel rats temporarily deaf because of the confined space. Tunnel rat operations were problematic from the very start. First, tunnel detection was challenging, as its entrances were heavily camouflaged. Hence, the soldiers had to stomp their feet into possible entrances for an accurate location. Once the entrance was detected, the tunnel rat would access the entrance head first, with other teammates' help, who would lower him by holding onto his ankles. This position allowed the soldier to grab his pistol in one hand and his flashlight in the other. Once everyone on the team was inside the tunnel, the team's leader would use the bayonet to examine the area for mines and booby traps. Simultaneously, the second-in-command would assist in pulling security while also looking up for tripwires on the ceiling of the tunnel. A Dangerous Mission Tunnel Rat's casualty rate was around 33%, a high number even for the Vietnam War. It was a risky volunteer opportunity. The missions were terrifying, even for the sanest of soldiers. Not only was the tunnel's darkness and narrowness harrowing, but they also hid several dangers. According to former Tunnel Rat Jim Merritt, although thorough, their training did not prepare them for all the experiences they actually encountered on the job. As he described, quote, We were trained at the Australian Army's School of Military Engineering, located 20 miles west of Sydney. The three-month course covered a lot of ground, mine detection, booby trap disarming, tunnel searching, and demolitions. Somehow I had convinced myself that my job as a combat engineer was going to be more engineer than combat, that the truly dangerous stuff would be handled by real experts. I was wrong. When the Viet Cong found out about the tunnel rats and their intentions, they began taking countermeasures to protect themselves, and they loved using booby traps. The Viet Cong used venomous snakes, infected sticks, spiders, and even scorpions to attack the soldiers. Tunnel rats were advised to enter the tunnels wearing a gas mask, since the Viet Cong also enjoyed using poison gas. But since these devices made it even harder to see, hear, and breathe, many of them refused to wear them. As the tunnels were old and hand-dug, they were also at risk of sudden collapse. With all the dangers that came with the job, the courageous men needed to maintain a clear mental state of mind to not let the fear get the best of them. It was well known to their superiors that tunnel rats experienced a very physically and mentally demanding task in the underground tunnels. These perilous tasks could also push a tunnel rat's emotional state to his breaking point. Operating in a confined and pitch-black environment while crawling for hours looking for a heavily armed and angry enemy would cause even the sanest soldiers to mentally break down. According to the book Tunnel Warfare, quote, Occasionally, under the strain, a tunnel rat's nerves would break, and he'd be dragged from the tunnel screaming and crying. Once this happened, he would never be allowed down a tunnel again. Only the strongest were able to continue. Brave Men The dangers of this underground occupation turned the tunnel rat into a position of respect and high reverence by their fellow troops. Their unofficial Latin motto, Non Gratum Anus Dorentum, translating to Not Worth a Rat's Ass, proved that the tunnel rats were amongst the bravest and most courageous fighters in Vietnam. As for the tunnel rats themselves, they appreciated the adrenaline that came with the job. They loved telling their brave stories to everyone else at their base. The tunnel rats were doing a kind of subterranean warfare that had never been done before. The procedure had been born out of pure necessity, and it was incredibly successful. The Tunnel Rats procedures first garnered public attention in 1966, after a very public operation between the U.S. and Australian soldiers in the Binh Duong province, known as Operation Crimp. In the years following the war's end, many of the Tunnel Rats suffered from Agent Orange injuries due to their exposure to the chemicals on the tunnel's grounds. By the end of the decade, over 4,800 tunnels had been discovered by the U.S. and its allied forces. The U.S. Army heavily depended on the Tunnel Rats' highly specialized skill set, Without them, America would have incurred far more casualties and achieved far less success than the war. Although one could think that this tunnel system was rather rudimentary, at the height of its use, the network gave the Viet Cong a sense of security and power over the enemy, which boosted their morale. 
Underground tunnels are still used in war today, since they allow for plenty of strategic surprises. Nowadays, some of the tunnels used in the war can still be found in the jungle. They're currently preserved and maintained by the Vietnamese government. Tourists can crawl through sections of the dark tunnels used by Viet Cong troops and tunnel rats alike, but today, fortunately, there are no mines, booby traps, or poisonous snakes to fight with. <laughs>